Imagine, it's getting cold and dark outside, and then out of the blue, the power goes out. There's no way for you to use your normal lamps or ceiling lights, so you can't see as well, and you can't turn on the heater. Not to mention the fact the adults are worrying about the food spoiling in the fridge, and the kids are complaining of having no Wi-Fi. Soon enough, you begin to feel impatient and desperate because we need electricity to do our daily activities. Here, your fright or flight instinct kicks in. You can either wait for the problem to be fixed and the power to come back on, or you can use your prior knowledge and resources and make the best out of your situation. I remember experiencing a scenario very similar to this. The power was out for a couple of hours, and it didn't look like it was going to turn on anytime soon. It just so happened that I had a very important essay due the very next day, and my computer was running out of charge. So, using the resources I had, I went outside, I turned on the car, and I left it running. Using the USB ports inside the car, I was able to successfully charge my computer, and I was able to finish up my essay. Using a transformer I had, I was then able to connect my printer to the car and then print on my essay from there as well. We have to use our prior knowledge and resources, along with our imagination, in order to move forward, especially in rather desperate times. Just like me in the events described, many people have created technology to help others and advance civilization. This has not just been done to create cell phones or computers, but has been done since the beginning of recorded history. Today, I want to talk to you about two critical pieces of technology. The lens and the internal combustion engine. Let me give you an example. Imagine that you were alive 3,000 years ago, and you had trouble seeing things in the distance. You couldn't just go to the local store and buy a pair of glasses because they hadn't been invented yet. The very first lens, the Nimrud lens, was created 3,000 years ago by the fifth dynasty of the old kingdom of Egypt. It is made of rock crystal, is an inch and a half in diameter, and it was originally used to magnify images. It can be hard to envision how such a small and simple object has not changed the world. Because of this, not only are we made it better to eyesight for those of us who do not have 20-20 vision, but to better our understanding of our world and the world outside. And not to mention that this discovery has led to millions of people enjoying images from Blu-ray players and spending countless hours playing video games. Over 3,000 years after the Nimrud lens was created, the very first telescope was created in 1608 by Hans Lippershey. The very next year, in 1609, Galileo Galilei pointed a telescope into the sky and observed Jupiter and many other planets and moons over time, not to mention his discovery of the Milky Way. It can be hard to envision how one man's idea over 400 years ago has now grown to what it is today from the ancient Babylonians observing the night sky with nothing but their eyes, to being able to point an object, a device, a piece of technology into the sky and observe life-changing discoveries thousands of years later, to being able to successfully send a man to the moon only three and a half centuries later. It can be hard to grasp how far humanity has come and how far we can still go. Let's go a different route in history, but created by that same 3,000-year-old numbered lens. The very first microscope was created in 1590 by Hans and Zachary Janssen. This advancement meant that not only could lenses observe objects in the distance, but also objects that are very small. Later on in 1655, Robert Hooke created his very own light microscope, which led on to one of the most significantly changing discoveries of all time. He discovered the cell. Just take a minute to realize how this discovery has not changed the world. Because of this, not only has it given us humans a fundamental basis of life, but it has also allowed scientists to create cures to illnesses, which eventually led to the very first vaccine in 1796. Over 3,000 years, humans have been able to progress the Lumerid lens to the telescope and microscope. And in less than 400 years, humans have been able to advance the lens to small pieces of glass that take millions of images on cell phones every single day. Imagine where we will take lens technology tomorrow. Technology is a physical representation of human history. So many prior scientists and inventors create new ideas and discoveries over time, and then eventually there will be enough information, along with trial and error, to create the utmost perfected invention. How did your family get to California? Some of them may have driven in cars, but if your family came here a long time ago, they arrived on ships, 
by train, or even walked. These people would travel for days, weeks, even months to get here, but that's the technology that we take for granted, the automobile. Now, technology represents our human history, right? So going back, a perfect example is the internal combustion engine. Without getting into too much detail, for those of you who do not know what the internal combustion engine is, otherwise known as the ICE, it's an engine that is able to generate power by burning fuel with air inside of it. And then, using the gases produced in the explosions, then help to drive the pistons to do other work, which include making the vehicle move. In 1680, Christian Huygens designed an ICE that was to be filled with gunpowder, but he never built it. Between 1680 and 1861, which was when Nicholas Otto invented an effective gas motor engine, there were roughly eight other innovators from several different countries that gave rise to the creation of the ICE. If it weren't for all those prior innovators, Otto may have never created the ICE, and we would not have the cars that we have today. Otto used all of the information and discoveries that were achieved from his predecessors, along with their, not failures, but as Thomas Edison would put it, other ways that won't work, and he builds upon it using his own knowledge. But Nicholas Otto didn't stop there. In 1864, he decided to partner with German industrialist Eugene Langen, and together they were able to perfect the ICE, which eventually won them a gold medal in the 1867 Paris Exhibition. Later on in 1876, after partnering with Dutes, they were able to create the four-stroke engine, which is what we use in many of our cars today. And it was because of this four-stroke engine that Carl's Benz was then able to build upon it and created one of the very first cars in 1885. But the only problem with this was that cars were expensive to make, and only the upper classmen could afford them. It wasn't until Henry Ford decided to establish his own company, the Ford Motor Company, in 1903. And soon after, 10 years later, in 1913, he then decided to launch the first ever moving assembly line to mass produce the automobile he called the Model T. This meant that a majority of Americans could then afford the automobile, instantly changing the way that humans would travel forever. I could go on and on about all the great and amazing things that humans have done to help and improve our world for the better. But I hope that by now you see that all these great innovations started with just one idea. And sure, many other people may have had the same idea at the time, or even before. But these ideas are made impactful to humanity because one person took action and built upon it, starting with the ancient Egyptians. So the next time that you get into your car, you put on your glasses, or even just take a selfie. Take a minute to reflect on all the great collaboration that had to happen to make these technological advances possible. And remember the words of Sir Isaac Newton, standing on the shoulders of giants are a necessary part of creation, innovation, and development. It does not make what you do any less valuable. Embrace it. So stand on the shoulders of the great people that came before us, Learn from your technological advances and keep society moving forward. Thank you.